it appears to be a drinks break. The players are walking off the field and let's j just look. No handshakes, so it seems like they are going to continue for the final well, nine overs of this, uh, this match. Yes, <laughs> seems a bit strange. Um, and no one has removed the stumps, and but the batsmen have collected their stuff. They haven't left any of their helmets or bats on the pitch. So uh, as they dawdle off, well, we've actually got an opportunity to have a look at next week for these two sides. Uh, Diamond Creek are actually keying down to Greensboro Park to take on Riverside as a home game down there, as opposed to here at Marnbrook. While Lower Plenty are also at home, they're at home to North Elf and Wanderers at their traditional Anthony Field Reserve. It should be a couple of important games there. Uh, I particularly think that the Riverside Diamond Creek 2 game will be important, um, considering that w what Riverside situation is, because Riverside um, lost one game, won one game, and seemed to be on the on the mark to uh, win a second game, so they should be a 2-1, uh, assuming that they were able to defeat the North Elven Wanderers uh, right as we speak. And so, and here we have, um, you know, one of the more moderately good teams, Riverside, versus Diamond Creek 2, who should have their confidence up now that they've put up such a reasonably good performance. Exactly right there. Should's, of course, the key word there. We'll uh, hopefully I'll get some scores there from the uh, Riverside North Elf and Wanderers game as the, uh, the afternoon wraps up here. Um, but of course, yeah, they're playing a big gust to uh, to go four from four. It's uh, not easy getting uh, going for the, the first half of the uh, season unbeaten. But they got the opportunity to. They'll start favourites against the Wanderers, but just never know. Yes, well, the North Elf and Wanderers were just bowled out for 147, and the North Elf and Wanderers are also 1 1. So, um, assuming that they were unable, that the Riverside were able to chase down the runs, um, North Elfham should be 1 2. And so, a 1 2 team versus a 3 0 team. And uh, you would imagine that uh, th th that would be the real, that's really the game for Lower Plenty because there's a, about 10 or 11 rounds in the season. So, uh, that's the first third of the season now gone. So you would imagine that that would be the mark point where you decide to say, okay, this is what our season looks like. Exactly right there. Um, just back here, there looks to be some claps around in a huddle for Diamond Creek, which perhaps suggests that there is at the end of the game there. We'll, uh, we'll look to see if there's any more obvious signs there, including the stumps being removed and cones being brought in. But certainly those huddles makes it seem like the Lord Plenty have conceded uh, the fact that they're not going to win outright. That we actually are done dusted. Yes, so we're just uh, watching. Um, the the uh, lower plenty team seem to be uh, packing away their stuff. Everyone is like four or five people are bent over, putting stuff in bags. And Diamond Creek are walking off. And what are the two batters doing? Well, they're starting to pick up cones. So I think we are. Uh done dusted when it comes to the match result here. Okay, let's have a look at the cone picker up. Uh, yep, there it is. The game is over. Uh, they have conceded or someone, the captains have come together and decided that that's the end of the game. So we're not going to be seeing the final half an hour. And that is uh, the end of the game. So a bit disappointing that we aren't going to see the full broadcast. But anyway, that's the end. So, uh, where were we? Um, victory on first innings points for Lower Plenty. They go 3-0. And Diamond Creek 2, who uh, came off uh, two very embarrassing and horrifying losses, have uh, lost first innings in another horrifying display, but then put up a wonderful effort to uh, defend in second innings and have saved the game from an outright defeat. You're exactly right. It was looking so likely when it came to... Even the uh, the tea break there, where we had a lead for Lower Plenty, despite the fact that they only were uh, in the field just moments ago there. So it was a tremendous first session from uh, from the Bears, but to the Demons' credit, they've uh, fought hard back to make sure that they uh, not only uh, didn't concede all ten points, they but got some important bag practice there, in particular Farah and Petrosino there, who we 
more here about a bit later on in the Channel 8 play of the year. All right, so now let's take a break, and when we come back, we've got the wrap-up of this game. So you are watching Channel 8, the local sports network, in association with Beers 99.9 .9 FM Substitute Radio. Uh, don't go away. We've just got a short break, and then we've got the wrap-up. Desire took a seat at my side softly said to me I know you wanna go your own way But you're too weak to be free I know you mean well But this time you are wrong I fought this through, I promise you I've got to move on And I don't want you along And welcome back. As you can see, the uh, cones have been picked up. So the two uh, ground staff for Diamond Creek and now are they going to remove the stumps, the all important stumps, which hope so. is supposed to symbolize the end of the game. And yes, the stumps are being removed. And so I am Chucker Wilson, of course, your host and lead commentator. And I've got my co-host and co-commentator here, Damien Hayden Haydos. And we have just seen a game of cricket where Diamond Creek have been able to come back and save a game through excellent bowling and excellent batting. Exactly right there. For the majority of play since uh, lunch on the first day, it has been Diamond Creek actually on top of anything else there. Think about the fact that Lord playing got to as good as none for 61 and a lead of 18 in their first innings. The fact that they then lost 9 for 86. And the fact that Diamond Creek then finished up on 4 for 127. So when you compare all of that, the majority of it sounds like Diamond Creek would be uh, covering themselves with, uh, with victory there. But unfortunately, for their sake, there was the 22 overs and to begin with for their batting, which in all 10 wickets were lost. And uh, bowling didn't start particularly well, particularly when Mekarov was taking on Pierce. So majority good for Diamond Creek. It's just not the six points. Absolutely. Now, uh, the... Uh Third wicket fell uh, for Lower Plenty with the score at about 90. 
and then uh, they lost uh, the three wickets so um, they ended up at five for 120 at stumps and then they took another three wickets uh, three wickets or four wickets? Four, four wickets, only O'Connor didn't bat for, uh, for the Bears very quiet game for O'Connor, no, no, no batting and no bowling exactly right there, perhaps by design so uh, it means that um, they were able to take four wickets for only uh, 20 something runs scored this morning so when you take the second half of day one the first half of day two uh, Diamond Creek put up a wonderful, wonderful bowling performance and it really placed uh, the lower plenty batsmen um, in a bit of a problem because they couldn't score freely. Exactly right there. It's actually the first time this summer that we've actually seen lower plenties uh, batting in action there. As we know with their first two games, a lot of it was based around uh, Mekaroff and Anderson and these types. They're making so many runs there. The middle will actually haven't even come out to the middle. Not even to uh, have a look at the pitch, let alone to uh, face any deliveries there. So the fact that Diamond Creek were able to get in there shows two things. Uh, one, that Diamond Creek have got the bowlers to to make some sides a little bit worried. And two, that Lord Plain definitely need a lot of work in the nets. Okay, and then of course we saw Diamond Creek's batting response and they ended up rather putting up a really good effort. Yeah, exactly right there. Finishing on 4 for 127 there. Uh, so overtaking quite comfortably lower Plain score there and uh, moving a little bit forward there, ending up batting 49 overs and only losing 4 wickets there. So, think about a general day if you're batting first to face 68 overs. If you've only lost 4 wickets in 49 overs, you would generally bat out the day. So, uh, if they can do that next game, they'll arrive with a chance there against Riverside. Yes, definitely. And you would obviously they were trying to save the game, so it's not fair to look at the run rate, but the run rate was 2.5 or there or thereabouts. So if they are able to actually bat first on a two-day game, bat out their 68 overs and actually bat at about three runs and over, well, then they're getting in to get a competitive 200 score. And so suddenly we have a situation where Diamond Creek, were, who were the joke of the F2 division just a short while ago, where even to get double figures for a Diamond Creek batsman was considered a miracle, now, it's a situation where you can mathematically hypothesise Diamond Creek can creating a competitive total for their innings. Exactly right there, and uh, not a moment too soon there, the fact that uh, they've got obviously one more game across November before it enters in December and the halfway point of the summer. So, just in time, them finding form there. Even if it doesn't result in six points this particular game, it gives them hope for taking some points before Christmas. All right, let's take another break, and when we come back after the break, we ha we're going to say goodbye. This is Channel 8, the local sports network. Stupid is as stupid does, and Lester's done it all. We can't afford to just ignore the writing on the wall. In the herds and perks the group, yeah, I'll leave behind that nigga pooping Lester is a dimwit, and I've known my share of fools He's bringing down the system, and he's breaking all the rules In the herds and perks the group, yeah, I'll leave behind that nigga pooping Watch him roam away Done. 
Okay, so we're just about to say goodbye here. All of the players have packed up their stuff and they're wandering off to the Coventry Oval to watch the remainder of the ones game, uh, to have a beer at the pavilion, to say goodbye and to go back to their lives for another week. So, hey Dos, let's have a look at your 3-2-1 for the player of the year of Channel 8 for the 2017-18 season. Let's start with uh, one vote, then two votes and three votes. Take it away, Haydos. Pretty conventional to do it in that particular uh, order there. Look, look, in terms of where it was going to look like, there weren't going to be many honourable mentions there, but as the day progressed, there were some players who, uh, who came a lot better as the day went throughout. Most players improved throughout the game. There were three players who did stand out for me, and that's why they're featuring in the votes. Uh, for me, the one vote actually goes to Zach Petrohasino. Did a good job with the ball, took a couple of wickets, and then uh, fought hard to be one of the night batsmen in the second innings there. With the, his batting in the second innings, obviously when the uh, six points had already been uh, decided there, probably counted a little bit less than perhaps batsman who did better in the first innings there. But he uh, he's definitely improved as the match went on there. So he's my one vote. My two votes went to Sean Russell, the hardest working of the batsmen in this particular match there. Uh, survived over 50 deliveries in the first innings there, and the second innings lasted until the 10th over there, so definitely has been seeing platforms as well as he can be for the innings there, so he's my two votes, and my three votes go to Steve Farrer. Got a couple of wickets there with his bowling, but in particular he's 84 there in the second innings there. Falling short of his 100, but again, his highest score here at the Mungrook Oval he'll be pleased with. Brings him into some form when he was a little bit out of form. So to recap, one vote, Zat Petrosino, two votes, Sean Russell, and three votes, Steve Farrer. Uh, Farrow's performance with the bat definitely was a man of the match performance because uh, he just, uh, although obviously the other uh, batsmen definitely were able to uh, bat long innings, keep the ball, good balls out, occupy the crease for a long period of time, it was really Farrow who combined both defensive play and offensive play, uh, hitting those boundaries which kept the scoreboard ticking over, especially um, with big blocks of boundaries uh, in a short periods of time, which meant that Diamond Creek were able to get into the black with enough time that they were able to shut down the innings in the last hour or so. And so, if you could imagine, if Lower Plenty were still uh, have a, had a net lead with the last hour to play, they would have still they would have gone at it more aggressively. But once uh, Diamond Creek had a lead, and you had to calculate how a run chase would happen it looked pretty much out for lower plenty and so it was those runs those 80 runs which pushed uh, the scorecard from a Diamond Creek deficit to a Diamond Creek lead which transformed the momentum and the shape of the innings and that meant that lower plenty could not uh, fight back and had to surrender in the end. So Farah's innings definitely transformed the way that the game was moving. You're exactly right there. Sort of took the uh, game by the scruff of the neck. Actually had the run rate up about four and over when he was batting there and considering the way the rest of the batsmen went that was uh, something extraordinary to bat at that particular speed there. So finally finding some form should be right now for the rest of the summer there. Wouldn't be surprised if we talk a little bit about him uh, later on in the year with some more runs there. Um, Hopefully now Diamond Creek can of course lift their performances in the first innings as opposed to leaving it till too late. Alright, it's time to say goodbye. So, we are here at the Mungrook Oval. We have just seen the end of day two of the round two, uh, round three contest between uh, Diamond Creek 2 and Lower Plenty in the F2 division in the 2017-18 season. Lower Plenty winning on first innings points but Diamond Creek able to defend to prevent an outright victory. This is Channel 8, the local sports network, in association with Biz 99.9 .9 FM Substitute Radio. I am Chucker Wilson, your host, and I'm here with Damien Hayden Haydos. Been an absolute pleasure, Chucker. We will see you next week. Until then, take care, happy bowling, happy batting. So
not a lion, but a lamb. We just withered and died like a lily outside in the cold. And the Rome wasn't built in a day. It took longer still to decay. Slowly but surely your brain just blurred me. Talked all night, now we don't even fight anymore. At first, I thought you needed space, but I was already being erased. The sole resolution, a foregone conclusion, it's done with a whimper. Surely your brain is 